Let's talk about the biggest losers of the past crisis. And these countries are in no particular order, but I have to say that some did a lot worse than others. Let's get started with country number one, which is Vietnam. Vietnam is a country located in Southeast Asia, and I had several friends living in Vietnam at the time of the past crisis, and they were experiencing unbelievable things such as crazy lockdowns, where the authorities decided to lock down entire apartment buildings. And you can guess why that happened. It was because of a handful of cases of virus cases in a certain building, and they decided to lock down the whole building, not allowing any person, not allowing any residents of that building to leave, right? That was crazy. You could not get in, you could not get out. And in many instances, or in some instances, they were not even allowed to get food delivery inside these buildings. They had security guards placed in those buildings and nobody was allowed in. I mean, that was crazy. And I had friends living in Vietnam during that period. And what happened was that one of them was very fortunate to have loaded up the fridge before they locked down the building because going to the grocery store was impossible. Now imagine this, if you're in a country like this and you're vacationing in the country or you are nomading in that country and all of a sudden a pandemic hits and they decide to lock down the whole building and you are blocked in an apartment without food, without water. At some point, right, during certain times they did allow delivery, food delivery, but it was a crazy period and they locked those buildings down for weeks. Now think about it, if you have pets, right, if you have a dog and you're blocked in that building, you cannot take your dog for a walk. I mean, of course, it isn't just about animals, it's about your personal freedom, right? And that's why I'm saying that Vietnam was one of the biggest losers of the past pandemic, because I don't think that this was solved in a very humane way. There would have been other ways to solve this, but certain places they reached for extreme measures, extreme control, and Vietnam was definitely one of those places. And what we're also seeing in Vietnam now in terms of like just the whole real estate bubble bursting, which is the result of poor regulation, poor rule of law. There were a lot of fraudulent projects that weren't really regulated enough, but now the government stepped in and did something about it. And then, of course, there is the fact of just overbuilding. You know, a lot of places have overbuilt to the point where so many empty apartments are available online. And we all know the principle of supply and demand. The more supply there is, and if that supply is not filled by sufficient demand, you can guess what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that the prices start dropping because that's how the market works. And this is not just in Ho Chi Minh City. This is also in Bangkok. Bangkok is extreme or in Kuala Lumpur as well, you know, where they overbuilt. The value of apartments hasn't really gone up much. In some instances, it might even have gone down. And so Vietnam was definitely one of the biggest losers, right? Then Austria, a very interesting country. You probably did not expect me to talk about Austria which is my native country where I was born and raised. I lived there for a long time, but what the government of Austria decided to do with the vaccine mandate was beyond crazy, beyond crazy. It was the only country in the whole European Union that decided to take such a drastic stance on this situation because they wanted to get as many people as possible vaccinated before the virus kind of softened or before other things happened. And so a lot of people were not happy with that. And this was just like fear mongering, you know, this was just a narrative used. It actually did not happen, right? The vaccine mandate did not happen. But the fact that they pushed for it as the only country in the European Union was crazy. Some countries thought about it. I'm, I'm sure they thought about it, but they decided not to do it. And I'm personally not happy with the authoritarian approach that Austria took during the past crisis. I feel like there were much more humane ways to go about this and, you know, talk to people in a much more humane way and not force people. And we also had crazy lockdowns for prolonged periods of the past crisis that put a ton of businesses out of business. And so... If you have lived in Austria during the past crisis, and I know many people who did, you know that you underwent quite a few changes that were not for the good. And we have to understand here, right? Europe is the continent with the most countries with the highest median age in the entire world. So we have to have a little bit of understanding, a little bit, a lot of understanding, you know, because what governments do 
is that they protect their citizens against something like a pandemic, which is sensible. So they had to do what they had to do. Italy had to do what they had to do. I think Greece put certain mandates in place for the older generations, you know, for retirees and stuff, because you can guess why they're more vulnerable. But to put a mandate on every person or to have the idea and actually push for this and make so many announcements and, and do whatever you can, and that's what the Austrian government did, my government did, is something that I did not agree with. And so many people in that country did not agree with it. But like I said, what's the deciding factor is, of course, the median age and how vulnerable people are. There always has to be like a middle ground, right? I mean, you have to be considerate. You can be selfish during a time of pandemic. I'm not completely polarized here and, and say, you know, you should do whatever you want as you did before, you know, just during any time. I don't believe in that. I believe in a more of a center approach and more of like a middle ground that works for all parties involved and not being completely polarized in either direction. And so Austria definitely was one of the biggest losers of the past crisis. Next up, we have Australia. Oh, you probably thought that country would be discussed in this video, didn't you? Australia did a hardcore thing during the past crisis. I mean, the kind of restrictions and lockdowns and, and just measures the Australian government put in place definitely shocked a lot of people, not just in Australia, but also people across the whole world, right? I mean, there were so many Australians stranded overseas who could not get big into Australia, right? Australians could not get back into their home countries. And this was crazy to watch. Families were separated. People could not get back into Australia. There were so many Indian Australians, right, that were stranded in India that could not get back into Australia. That was just nuts. But also other ethnicity groups that could not get back in, right? Other Australians that could not get back in. And this was happening for a prolonged period of time. This was real. And just being separated from your family for such a long time and not knowing at what point you were allowed to return to your country was crazy. This affected all Australians. And then they had also like camps for people who had the virus. And that's also a very extreme measure that a lot of people did not even want to believe. To be real, they woke up and smelled the roses pretty much. But if we take a look at Australia's approach towards biosecurity, we can see that Australia was always very careful, you know, very sensitive towards these types of things, you know, pandemics, viruses, how we can tell that is by just taking a look at the requirements the Australian government put on people who want to get a, an animal into Australia. You know, the requirements are enormous. Try importing an animal into Australia unless you come from one of the few countries where there are zero cases of rabies. It's going to be a nightmare importing an animal into Australia. That's why so many people decide not to do it, which is sensible, understandable. Just the general approach that Australia has in place for allowing animals to be imported into the country, you know, it kind of mirrored what happened during the past crisis. Needless to say, a lot of people were put out of business. I have a friend in Australia, he owned a gym and he was forced to shut down the gym for prolonged periods multiple times, not just once, but multiple times. And he just had no idea if he's going to make it or not. You know, it, it was just a crazy period for him. If you had a business and you were supposed to pay your rent every single month on time, and my friend, you know, he owns the gym, but he doesn't own the building where the gym is, but he owns the equipment and everything. So he had to make a choice. He either stops paying, you know, and that can lead to certain consequences in some instances, severe consequences, or he just continues paying the rent without being able to open the business, without being able to generate revenue. I mean, it's a very hard time. So people had savings, but many people did not have that much savings to survive for a year or two. So it was a very hard time for businesses. It was a very hard time for people. And certain measures were definitely sensible, but not all measures were sensible. Last but not least, we have a country that must be on the list, China. And China was probably the most extreme out of all the countries we're discussing in today's video. And if you know people who lived in China during the past crisis, you know that this was not easy by any means. They shut down entire cities. Like in Vietnam, China shut down buildings, you know, apartment buildings. 
they shut down certain areas. It was not, and China had the longest lockdowns out of all the countries that exist. Show me a country that had more lockdowns than China. Probably none of them did. Some friends of mine were happy to have left China after years and years of struggle. They had a hard time financially, personally, and also in terms of family matters, you know, being separated and or not being able to work. You know, all, all these components were just really, really bad for people. And so many people have actually given up on the CCP concept. We heard the president of China, Xi Jinping, made a statement about what happened, you know, after the past crisis, he said that the CCP has lost hundreds of millions of supporters overseas. This is pretty, pretty crazy stuff. You know, if you have to admit that your party is in decline, that your party has lost so many supporters over just a couple of years because of the decisions that were made, I think it's pretty drastic. And it makes people think, how much longer will this party be able to survive? And given the history of what's been happening it might not live for much longer and a new cycle begins. But for sure, China was one of the toughest countries. Like I said, I had friends who were trying to get out and they were not able to get out. I mean, it was brutal. It was brutal. So if you were in China during the pandemic and you made it, your skin must be a lot thicker now than people that lived in America and enjoyed a lot of freedom, a lot more freedom than in certain other places. Are there any other countries that should be on the list of the biggest losers during the past crisis? We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching.